Hey everybody, it's Matt from Eastwood Company. We're here doing another live technical demo here in the Eastwood garage. For any of you guys that haven't watched one of these before, we want this to be as interactive as possible. We want you to log on, chat, comment, ask questions. Uh, we have Randy over here that does a lot of our videos as well. Randy's doing the live chat. He's answering some questions live for you guys. He's also going to throw some over to me. The topic today is going to be uh, in the realm of TIG welding. We're going to get into a little bit of intermediate stuff here. We've done a bunch of videos. If you haven't watched them before, uh, recorded as well as live, doing TIG welder setup, TIG welder basics, how to run a puddle. And we've had some requests for doing some more intermediate uh, type stuff where you're, you've got a puddle down, but you're getting into some more uh, different uh, circumstances that are much more difficult. So today what we're going to be covering um, is filling holes in aluminum which is a little bit difficult, it can be tricky. So one that I've run into a lot is um, doing wheels. Uh, and this, this same aspect, the same situation can be put into doing crack repairs and things like that. Doing aluminum wheels, timing belt covers, uh, water necks, things like that on an engine that could be uh, cracked or damaged. Or maybe somebody drilled a hole in a part previously and put a threaded bung or something in it that you don't want. You want to take it out, you want to fill the hole up, clean it up, make it look like original again. I'm going to show you how to fill a hole up using the TIG welder, which is a pretty clean way to do it. Um, and there's a little bit of trick to it. So we're going to do some underhood welding. So what we're going to do is we'll have Joe come over that's filming and he's going to put a special lens over the camera so you guys can see what it looks like under the hood. Uh, pretty cool stuff. So um, for machine setup, what we have here on our welder uh, we're using, of course, our Eastwood TIG 200 AC-DC. Uh, it's pretty tried and true. Uh, what we have here on the, the gas side, it's 100% argon. And we have one of our flow meters on here. Our machines come with, and I'll try and turn this so you can see, well, this is our MIG welder bottle, but we have a style here that has two round dial gauges on it. That's what our welder comes with um, standard. But if you want to upgrade and get something that's a little more accurate, and you actually see what the flow of your machine is when you're welding you and get one of these flow meters we have them on the website um, that you can order and you can upgrade this to your welder what this does i'm going to flip this on and i'm going to hit the pedal and joe's going to film over here you can see the little now there's a little ball that floats up in here during that time and tapers down when it turns off so with this you can hit the pedal and actually see what you're flowing and you can turn the little the knob here to get a higher or lower. No, I have it. I'm going to hit it one more time. I have it turned up pretty high for what we're doing today. So it's getting up 25-ish range is what it's getting up to for the CFH. So normally when I'm welding, say, sheet metal or, or just a normal butt weld, I'll have it turned down to, say, 15 or something like that, maybe 18. And that works pretty good. But what we're doing today, where we're trying to fill a hole in a big area, we really need a lot of gas flow that's going down into the hole that we're filling. Um, so I like to turn the gas up. You're going to waste some more gas, but it's better than having a porous weld that's going to be weak and, and it cause pits in it that's going to come back. Uh, the other thing I'm using here is I have a gas lens kit connected to the, uh, the, the TIG welder to the torch. Uh, this, for what we're doing today, I would say is pretty much a necessity. You need to have a gas lens kit. Gas lens kit has a screen in here, if you're not familiar, has a screen in here that puts a plume of gas out that basically fogs the area that you're welding. It's much more efficient, better coverage than a, the traditional style that comes with the machine as standard. Uh, the gas lens kit's gonna be a lot better. It's gonna cover a better area. And for what we're doing, we want as much gas coverage as we can get. So I have the flow turned up, and I have the gas lens with a big nozzle, a fairly large nozzle on it um, that's going to cover a pretty good area, so we should keep the weld as clean as possible. So what we're working with over here, we're going to jump right into it here shortly, is we have a, I have a piece of aluminum here where I drilled some pretty, pretty large, some pretty large holes into it. So we were getting the the machine set up, I did one real quick just to do the first pass of filling that, but you can see these holes we got, they're pretty big. This is a hole that, you know, I've seen like on a water neck or something like that where someone has uh, 
you know, drilled a hole for a bung or, or whatever reason, uh, you know, this is a pretty large hole. This is, is getting pretty difficult to fill. A smaller hole you can do much easier and quicker, but the way I'm going to show you here, you can use it, you can do it on a smaller hole or a larger hole, it doesn't matter, but I'm kind of taking it to the extreme here, having a pretty large hole. Now, this is about the most I would fill um, if I can get to the back side of this, because uh, we can fill from both sides. If this was something where I couldn't get to the back side of it, so I didn't feel confident that I could get a nice, uh, a good weld on the back side, or I couldn't get my filler rod to fill up that hole, what you can do is you can machine out, or you know, with a hole saw or whatever, whatever you want to use, you can make a slug or get round bar, make a slug that you can sit into this hole that's going to be recessed a little bit and it's a real nice tight fit and then you're basically um, you are welding that slug into the hole and then you're filling up maybe an eighth inch gap or an eighth inch recess with your filler rod. So that's one way to do it. If that's something I couldn't get into the hole um, to get to the back side I would do something like that that's a nice press fit. It just gives a little more security but I'm going to show you on this piece here we're going to assume you can get to the back side say it's a, a wheel or something where you can get to both sides you can do this and something that's you know not super thick if it's something that's really thick you are going to have to put a slug in it and weld uh, weld the slug in because so you're not going to be able to get filler rod all the way in so that's what we're working with i got the machine set up of course it's on ac so we're welding aluminum the other thing here is for what we're doing i have uh, the clearance effect set a little more towards the positive side. So I'm not going to say that it's in the positive, it's just more towards zero. So I have it around negative two, I would say, maybe negative one and a half um, in that range. If I was welding nice clean aluminum where we we're just doing a butt weld and I wanted a real tight arc, I would probably have it turned up more like uh, negative three, negative three and a half, something like that where the metal's real clean and I'm using a gas lens. But because we want, I want a larger arc so I can heat a bigger area to kind of fill that hole up, I have it turned just a little bit more towards the negative side. Or I'm, I'm sorry, more towards the positive side. So the more you go towards the positive side, the wider your arc's going to be. It's going to heat up a bigger area. But what, mainly what I want is it's going to clean a bigger area. So I want to basically clean around that weld, which you're going to see when we go under the helmet, uh, before I start actually laying any filler rods. So that's why I have it turned closer, more towards the positive side, or more towards zero. Uh, I also have the pre and the post flow cranked up higher than I normally would. So I have some pre flow cranked up to uh, 0.4 seconds approximately, just a little under, but around there. What that's doing is that's giving me an extra uh, fraction of a second, almost half a second of shielding gas that's around the weld area before I actually strike an arc. It's just I'm trying to do everything I can to keep it clean. Uh, so I'm getting, getting shielding gas in there before I even strike an arc. The post flow, I have it turned up pretty high. I have four seconds. What that is is after I'm done welding, I'm going to slowly let off the pedal and I'm going to let gas flow over the weld. And I'm turning it up a little higher than I would normally because we're going to be hitting up a big area and shoving a lot of filler rod in. So it's going to tend to stay um, soft or molten or um, it, it could get impurities much easier. So by doing this we're putting, we're keeping gas flowing over that hot weld for a longer period of time. Normally I'd probably have it down near like two and a half, three seconds, but I want that extra second or so of uh, shielding gas just to try and help me as much as I can. So that's how I have the machine set up. Um, on the pedal, this is our new rocker pedal for the Eastwood TIG 200. A little more ergonomic. You can fit your foot in the bottom here and, and it's a rocker style. I have the, the, we have an adjustment here on the side of the pedal. So when you're using the pedal, you can adjust it on the fly right on the, on the pedal. So I have it turned up to about, let's say 120, 130 amps for my max. So when I'm mashing on that pedal, that's what I'm getting. So, I'm probably not going to use that full 130 amps very much, except at the very end, but I want to have it there just so I know that when I want to punch the, the, uh, the pedal down, I got that amperage to kind of goose it and give me some more 
some more heat into the piece. So that's my machine set up. Is there any questions we have before I start doing some more? All right. So if you have any questions, shoot them over. We'll have some time afterwards, but I'm going to make this short and sweet. Not a lot of talking, some more doing. So I got my holes filled up here. I'm going to do this one here. Now, one thing I am, I did it ahead of time, but I'll show you guys. I did this ahead of time a little bit, but when you're doing these holes, uh, filling a hole, you want to clean the area as good as you can with a sander, grinder, uh, scotch bright, anything like that. But the other thing you want to do, you want to, you want to actually the inside of the hole. That's a part that I've seen that people often forget. You've got to get inside that hole. So what I like to use is one of these burr bits that we sell, a tapered burr. Um, it's carbide burr. And what this does, you can get in there, move it around, and clean up the inside of the hole. So I'll do this one again just to be safe. So I'm not going real fast, just, and I'm not taking a lot of material off. I'm just trying to clean and get fresh metal in there, especially if it's a, it's a hole you're filling, it's an old hole. Uh, something that was, you know, that was made a long time ago and you, you haven't gone back through it. You're, you're taking off that layer of oxidation in there by hitting it with, the, uh, with that bit. Uh, I did, I've done before a couple times actually, uh, is wheels that have like bead locks that were put in them for like drag racing. And someone wanted the holes filled and they want to put their own, a new set of bead locks on them. We had to fill all these holes. The holes were already there, so what I ended up doing is actually upsizing the holes. So took the drill bit, went to the nut size up, and just drilled the holes actually a little larger on every single one. That just made sure that you get clean metal to start with. So we're not starting with metal that's oxidized and has dirt ground into it. So it's best to do that. So that's a good little tip uh, for cleaning ahead of time. So I've already hit this panel with our low VOC pre, scotch bright, paper towel, everything to wipe it off. So, we're ready to start welding. All right. Whenever you're ready, Joe, I'll get, uh, I'll get set up here. Now I'm using a, uh, I'm using a half, I broke a piece of filler rod in half. Since these are pretty large hole we're filling, I'm using uh, a 332nd filler rod, 332nd uh, electrode. It's the E3 uh, electrode or tungsten that I'm using. It has a nice stability for welding. And I'm going to be using this to, to kind of fill the hole here. Now, I'm going to have to go around, so a little more movement. So just so you know, I'm not going to hit you over there. All right, we know when you're ready. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike an arc. And what I'm doing is I'm cleaning. I barely have the pedal pressed. You can see all that oxidation that's, that's cleaning off. I'm, I'm kind of going through and almost doing a preheat, if you will. And I'm cleaning the oxidation off as much as I can here. All right, so I'm going to start right here. Where you start doesn't matter, it's just what's comfortable for you. And I'll give it a little more throttle. I start seeing it turn molten. And I'm going to try and work that edge first. So I'm pumping the pedal just to fill that edge up a little bit. I'm trying to overlap some of my weld into the center. Now you can go, since this is a pretty big hole, we're going to have to go around a couple times here.
Now that I got some heat into it, I don't have to actually... I'm going around, starting to fill up. Now when I get about to where there's a hole like this, I'm going to punch the pedal, start feeding filler rod. As soon as I see it fill up like that, I'm going to let off, blend the area in, and put one more last dab and come off real slow. I'm going to come to the side here, let off, let that gas flow. Okay. So I added a lot of filler rod to that. We're going to show the back side as well, so get again. Um, so uh, we'll show you after I'm done here the two sides. But this side here, um, you can't see right now because we have the lens on, but although, um, I basically filled that hole up all the way when I punched that pedal it kind of caved in that extra weld that I was putting on the edges and then I added filler rod to kind of fill it all up in one shot full amperage and now what I have this is the back side of the weld here on the back side of the weld I actually have too much material on the back side which is good so you want to be able to take some off and make that hole invisible so the back side of the weld since there was no gas flowing on that weld there is some contamination on just the topmost layer because there wasn't any gas flowing up from behind. So we want to hit this stainless steel brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this area up with the torch and kind of start blending it in. And if I need any extra material, there's a fair amount there, so I shouldn't have to add too much. But I'm going to keep some rod in my hand just in case. And we're going to fill up just on the edge here. All right, ready? All right, so same thing. We're going to kind of go over the whole area, try and get it cleaned up. This outer edge of the hole, remember, we haven't cleaned with the torch yet. So I'm just letting this alternating current just dance around and clean for us. Clean, clean, clean. I go here in the center, clean, and I'm starting to add more amperage. Keeping my filler rod out of the center right now, but it's real close just in case I need it. Starting to melt it in. Now I'm going to start giving some more amperage. And I'm going to move that puddle over. I just moved it over. Moving it out. And just blending it in, filling the hole. Now I'm letting off. Put a little dab of filler. Alright. So. We got this side, this is the back side of the hole here. Let me know where you got. So we got the back side of the hole here filled up. You can see the white halo that's around there. Now that halo's cleaning area is much larger than it would be if you just kept your hand in one spot. I kind of danced around the torch to just get me a nice clean area so if my weld kind of flows out, it doesn't flow out and, and go into metal that wasn't cleaned and is dirty. I'm going to flip it over. All right. So we're going to have, this is the other side here. So what I would do now, to this hole perfectly, is I'm going to hit it with the sander. Sand it a little bit just to knock that little bit of extra off. And then we'll see where we're at. And then we may have to go back just a little bit. So let me uh, set this down. And then we are going to use the grinder here, real quick, just to hit this area.
I'm just lightly hitting it just to knock down any high stuff. I'm trying not to dig in too much with the with the sander. I just want to knock that that high stuff off. So right around this edge here, this and this this is the front side. Uh, I have a little crater, which is uh, probably out actually at the edge of that hole or on the outside of the hole, but just from blending it around extra fill, we have a little crater there. So don't expect you can always do this one shot and one pass. You can fill it if it's a small hole. Sure, you could probably fill it in one shot, would have been a lot quicker, but because there's a pretty large hole we're filling here, and I'm trying to fill it on both sides, uh, we're, we may have to come back. So I hit that with the sander, but there's still, in that crater there, there's probably going to be some oxidation that occurred just from it sitting here. So I'm going to hit the area with a fresh stainless brush that I use only on aluminum. Try and dig in there. Vincent would like to know if you could have used a copper backer. Uh, we had a question if I could use a, a copper backer on this piece here. Uh, yes, we could have used a copper backer or any kind of backer to help uh, back up the hole uh, for this particular piece. Uh, but you just have to remember that depending what you're doing. Now for aluminum it's obviously not going to stick um, and when you're doing steel it's not going to stick as much but the piece, the, the copper backer you may use may not be clean and when you go to start putting filler rod against it that's melting, molten um, it may actually have some impurities that will pop up through it. The other thing I wanted to uh, show is that you can't always get a copper backer back there to kind of help you. You don't always have that help. So I was trying to show this piece up above, a little more difficult. But in the real world, I find like most times when I like to use the copper backer, I really need it. I can't use it. But yes, you could use the copper backer. I would just make sure that it's very clean before you use it. So I would almost hit that with scotch bright and everything and clean that up so that you're not dropping weld down that's touching it that is then uh, has impurities on it. So. I'll keep using this area real, real good. Let it dance out outside of the valley. Try and shove a little more filler rod than I need in. And go bigger than I need with the... Let it sit. And we got shut off. So, I'm going to show you before I flip it over and do the other side. You can see, again, I let the, the cleaning part of the AC side, the alternating current, uh, dance around. I actually went out further, and you can see that little bit of a black halo there. When I started uh, letting it clean around the center of where I was welding, I saw a lot of uh, contaminants, you know, soot or something in there that was popping up. So I let this clean way outside of what I was welding because I didn't want that impurities to pop and kind of find its way back into my weld. So I went out much further than I needed and I got, again, I got that clearance effect or the AC balance control uh, set a little more to the positive so I got a bigger cleaning area. So you can see that big halo around it, but you can see that just little bit of black or gray, which was contaminants that popped up. I'm going to guess it's from that grinder because that wasn't a fresh uh, flap disc I used, so it's probably got a tiny bit of contaminants in it from using it on steel or something else. So that one's filled. This back side here, not too much, but they got those two little spots. So I'm just uh, assuming here whatever we're doing, we want this, this hole to completely disappear. So I'm going to try and touch up those two little spots, hit it with the sander again, see where we're at, and then hopefully the second pass we should have it. So, same, same thing. thing. I'm going to get, get in, in here. here. 
wire brush, get those crevices. All right. Still on my one half piece of filler rod here. I'm going to try and get away with using just this filler monster hole. So put the lens on, I'll show you the, the letting it clean again and I'm going to try and fill this little tiny divot I have from when I when I uh, let off the pedal I got a little bit of a divot there um, that occurred. I probably let off the pedal a little quick. Right when you are, Matt. All right so we're going to Started with the top piece. And I'm just going back and forth, cleaning that little area back in the center. I'm barely on the pedal. You don't want to just stomp right out on the pedal. I want to clean. So I can see right in here there's a bunch of that soot popping up again. So I'm cleaning way out into it. I'm going to clean in that center section. I think I'm going to hit this part first. So I'm just slowly getting in on the pedal. So I had one little dab of filler. I'm going to back off and let it go back to cleaning. So we're not going to stop. We're just going to keep cleaning in here. I have this little halo. So I'm going to start outside of it. So a little dab. A little dab. A dab, a little more, no. all right, back off, let her gas flow, fill our little spots up there. So I'm going to hit these real quick with the, the sander, sander again. again, and I'm, and I'm just, just using, using the flap disc to, you know, you know just, just to real, real quick, quick show you guys, but if you were doing something that was need to be perfectly flat or machined. You know, of course, you need to take a machine shop or do it yourself with a mill. You could come over and mill this, make it perfectly flat. But we know that we're filled 100% of the way through this hole. So we can machine this, drill it, tap it, do anything we want to it, just like we would have originally before the hole was drilled. So. Barely standing this. I just quick went over that. Um, and of course, without a straight edge, it's hard to tell. But you do, you want to have more material than you need. So this is the top side here. So we can see it's pretty much gone. I can see a little tiny halo where I, a little section I repaired. I can't tell just by using the grinder there, but I think I might the center might still be a little high. So probably what I would do it here is take a tick. Um, a, uh, a block, block sand it, see where I'm at. You can spray, um, you can spray a dust coat or machinist dye on it and then sand it and they'll tell you, file it, tell you where the high spots are. This is our backside. Same thing. Got a little, just a little tiny halo there, but I mean, depending on what you're doing, you can go back and chase those little marks. You can sand them. We could add more to the center all around and build it up and then sand it off. 
same thing, but that's our piece. We filled the hole. Now you only have to do that like a hundred more times if you're doing a wheel or something like that. But this is the process. Again, if you were filling something that's, that's much more thick, you would have to make a slug and drop it in and, uh, and, and weld it from both sides preferably. But uh, do we have any other? Yeah, we have um, three questions. Sure. Uh, the first one's probably fairly simple. Dana on Facebook would like to know, how high do you, are you holding the tungsten off the workpiece? It was Dana, correct? Yes. Dana on Facebook, uh, thanks for the question, uh, asked how high I was holding the tungsten electrode off of the workpiece while I was working. I'm keeping it pretty darn close. Um, what I like to teach when we're doing a beginner class is the thickness of your filler rod that you're using, approximately, is a good height. So we're using 332nd. Oh boy. 332nd. So my electrode is about 330 seconds off of the workpiece approximately. So that's about how far. If we're doing 1 16th, I could have it sharpened and I lower amperage and I could be even closer to the piece. But you want to make sure that you have it. I wouldn't go much more than the height of what your filler rod is. That's a good question. And um, Bob would like to know, is, uh, what's the technique if the metal was vertical as opposed to horizontal? Uh, so Bob asked what the technique would be if the metal was vertical instead of horizontal, it's basically the same. Um, the way I'm doing it, when, if, even if it was vertical, what I would be doing is, if we were filling this hole here, I'm, I'm goosing the pedal or giving the pedal um, amperage when I want the filler rod in there. So it's not staying hot long enough for gravity to basically affect it, where sometimes you're, when you're welding, say with a MIG welder or, or stick, it changes the technique because of going up and down. But really all I would be doing is I would just be goosing the pedal, add some fill rod, work my way around it until I get a nice, I get just a keyhole almost. And then I, I would, same thing, come right in from the center, heat it up and just drop fill rod in, in there until it fills up. But same basic process, you're just, uh, you're going to be out of position a little more, so you may have to kind of turn your head a little bit, but same, same thing. And one other question. Um, from Yannick, who's with us every week. How would you solve high frequency interference problems? High interference. Oh, so Yannick asked, uh, how would I solve high, uh, sorry. High frequency interference problems. High frequency Or should I ask him to further explain and we'll get back to him? Yeah, because that, that one, I'm not sure what the interference he, he's talking about, what would be causing that. So he's asking uh, the interference when you're welding with a high frequency uh, what would be, what can you do to stop, to stop that? But I don't know. I'd like to know what's causing the interference. If he All has right. a well, he can, um, he can send us a message. Yeah. If you, if, or if he can type in maybe a little more detail and we can try to answer him. Yeah. Just give us a little more background of what the problem is that you're happy, having and I can better, we can better answer it. But off the top of my head, I'm, it's kind of a broad, I don't want to say broad, but it's something that I'm not sure what why he's having that issue that would be causing that, um, that, that interference. So that's, that's, you got me stumped on that one, but give us some more clarification, either in a message or drop it in the comments, and we can, uh, we can try and answer it the best we can afterwards. So that's all we got for questions. Thanks, everybody, for joining us as we do another live tech session. Um, make sure you, you uh, follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we'll be doing more of these lives. We have another one. Are we working on the car this Friday again? Yeah, we might be coming live uh, Friday with the door, but tomorrow we're going to do um, just show you a battery maintainer, which is our daily deal. Okay, so we're, we're trying to do a live almost every day now. So tomorrow, make sure you tune in. We're going to do our daily deal, show you a little bit of battery maintainer. But then on Fridays, we're trying to get, we've had some requests for, for you guys that like to see us actually working on a project vehicle and, you know, the things that we, we come up with. So we're going to be working on, hopefully, on the, the door. Uh, work on that project a little more. I'm going to let you guys watch and, and uh, give us some tips if you think we're doing something wrong. So thanks, thanks everybody for watching. We're going to catch you next time. Thanks.